All right, we are on chapter 29 of A Course in Miracles, and this chapter is called The Changeless Dwelling Place. <clears throat> and this was the original title in Helen's handwritten notebook. It was called The Changeless Dwelling Place, and it's almost exactly as it was in her original notebook. I'm reading from the, the Blue Third Edition put out by the Foundation for Inner Peace. So let's read it, and then we'll talk about it. <clears throat> There is a place in you where this whole world has been forgotten, where no memory of sin and of illusion lingers still. There is a place in you which time is left and echoes of eternity are heard. There is a resting place so still no sound except a hymn to heaven rises up to gladden God the Father and the Son. Where both abide are they remembered, both. And where they are is heaven and is peace. Think not that you can change their dwelling place, for your identity abides in them, and where they are forever must you be. The changelessness of heaven is in you, so deep within that nothing in this world but passes by, unnoticed and unseen. The still infinity of endless peace surrounds you gently in its soft embrace, so strong and quiet, tranquil in the might of its creator, nothing can intrude upon the sacred Son of God within. Here is the role the Holy Spirit gives to you who wait upon the Son of God and would behold him waken and be glad. He is a part of you and you of him because he is his father's son and not for any purpose you may see in him. Nothing is asked of you but to accept the changeless and eternal that abide in him for your identity is there. The peace in you can but be found in him and every thought of love you offer him but brings you nearer to your awakening to peace eternal and to endless joy. This sacred son of God is like yourself, the mirror of his father's love for you, the soft reminder of his father's love by which he was created and which still abides in him as it abides in you. Be very still and hear God's voice in him and let it tell you what his function is. He was created that you might be whole, for only the complete can be a part of God's completion, which created you. There is no gift the Father asks of you, but that you see in all creation but the shining glory of his gift to you. Behold his Son, his perfect gift, in whom his Father shines forever, and to whom is all creation given as his own. Because he has, because he has it, is it given you, and where it lies in him, behold your peace. The quiet that surrounds you dwells in him. Um, and from this quiet come the happy dreams in which your hands are joined in innocence. These are not hands that grasp in dreams of pain. They hold no sword, for they have left their hold on every vain illusion of the world. And being empty, they receive instead a brother's hand in which completion lies. If you but knew the glorious goal that lies beyond forgiveness, you would not keep hold on any thought, however light the touch of evil on it may appear to be. For you would understand how great the cost of holding anything God did not give in minds that can direct the hand to bless and lead God's son unto his father's house. Would you not want to be a friend to him created by his father as his home? <clears throat> If God esteems him worthy of himself, would you attack him with the hands of hate? Who would lay bloody hands on heaven itself and hope to find its peace? Your brother thinks he holds the hand of death. Believe him not, but learn instead how blessed are you who can release him just by offering him yours. A dream is given you in which he is your savior, not your enemy in hate. A dream is given you in which you have forgiven him for all his dreams of death. A dream of hope you share with him instead of dreaming evil separate dreams of hate. Why does it seem so hard to share this dream? Because unless the Holy Spirit gives the dream its function, it was made for hate and will continue in death services. Each form it takes in some way calls for death. And those who serve the Lord of death have come to worship in a separated world 
each with his tiny spear and rusted sword to keep his ancient promises to die. Such is the core of fear in every dream that has been kept apart from, from use by him who sees a different function for a dream. When dreams are shared, they lose the function of attack and separation, even though it was for this that every dream was made. <clears throat> Yet nothing in the world of dreams remains without the hope of change and betterment, for here is not where changelessness is found. Let us be glad indeed that this is so, and seek not the eternal in this world. Forgiving dreams are means to step aside from dreaming of a world outside yourself, and leading finally beyond all dreams unto the peace of everlasting life. As always, quite poetic, quite beautiful, um, somewhat inscrutable, <laughs> unless you um, maybe have been doing the course, but that's why we're, that's why we're doing, the, you know, one, one reason we're doing this. In some sense, I'm doing this for myself because I, I wanna get clear about what the course says and I wanna go through it um, a little bit more, you know, um, reading it closely. And what better way to do it than with others? Because I think it's easier to do it when you share it, when you do it on your own, it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult. It's not impossible. It's like um, practicing yoga. It takes discipline to do it on your own, right? And if you go to a class, it's a little easier to do it. But the reality of doing yoga on your own and reading and studying the course and practicing the course on your own is... Um, that's the way, that's what it was intended for. This, you know, the course is a self-study guide. So keep that in mind. You know, I, what we're doing here is bringing certain things to light. Hopefully these will be helpful, but ultimately it comes down to you and your, um, relationship, your personal relationship with, with the course, what the course is saying. And you could say with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus, however you understand these things. But let's, um, you know, this, is, this section is called the changeless dwelling place. And it uses the metaphor, the word that comes up a lot here is abiding. And that word is um, in the Gospel of John quite often, um, especially in, in the part where Jesus says, I am the true vine. There's a whole um, soliloquy or monologue there where, where Jesus gives this teaching to his disciples about, I am the true vine, abide in me. Um, so the word abide is in that translation, the King, the King James um, translation, right? And which Helen knew. Helen knew the King James version of the Bible quite well, apparently. Um, so that's... That's here, the abiding and, and the house and the home. And so let's, let's get into it a little bit. There is a place in you where this whole world has been forgotten, where no memory of sin and evolution lingers still. There is a place in you which time has left and echoes of eternity are heard. There is a resting place so still, no sound except a hymn to heaven rises up to gladden God the Father and the Son. Where both abide, are they remembered both? And, when, and where they are is heaven and is peace. So within, within you, um, keep in mind that the Course talks about you and what is the you and who, or who is the you, what is the you that it's referring to? This has been brought up. I, I'm not the first person to bring this up, but, but people have talked about this that Jesus keeps addressing you. Well, on some level, it's Helen, because it originally came to Helen and to Bill. Um, but the you it's talking to is not necessarily our ego personality, but is that part of ourself, you could say the higher, our higher awareness, which is getting in touch with 
the, the, the power of choice that we have to choose truth over illusion. Um, so there is a place in you where this whole world has been forgotten, no memory of sin and illusion. Um, so it starts with you, right? There's a place in you, within yourself. This is still speaking in dualistic terms. It still seems as if God the Father and the Son are separate entities. There's a duality here, right? The word both are used. The, where both abide, are they remembered both? And where they are is heaven and is peace. Second paragraph. Think not that you can change their dwelling place. For your identity abides in them, and where they are forever must you be. The changelessness of heaven is in you, so deep within that nothing in this world but passes by unnoticed and unseen. So this changeless dwelling place is within you. You share the same dwelling place that, that God the Father and the Son also share. Right? And it, it, it is not aware of anything in this world. When you are, you know, you get, when you reach that place within yourself, the world is gone. <clears throat> the still infinity of endless peace surrounds you gently in its soft embrace, so strong and quiet, tranquil in the might of its creator. Nothing can intrude upon the sacred Son of God within. Okay, we'll go on. Third paragraph. Here is the role. Remember the last, um, last section was called dream roles. So this is using the word role again. Here is the role the Holy Spirit gives to you who wait upon the Son of God and, we, and would behold him waken and be glad. He, he is a part of you and you of him because he is his Father's Son and not for any purpose you may see in him. Nothing is asked of you but to accept the changeless and eternal that abide in him, for your identity is there. The peace in you can but be found in him, and every thought of love you offer him but brings you nearer to your awakening, to peace eternal and to endless joy. So this is a restatement of really what the Course is saying basically on, basically on every page which is just as this changeless dwelling place is within you, it is, this, it is also in your brother. It is in all your brothers, right? This, this place is, with, is within everyone. And in your acknowledgement and your acceptance of that, um, we all learn the truth about ourselves. And when we deny that, we 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 take a step back take a step back so to speak or we we lose sight of our self of our true self when we do that let's go on the sacred son of god is like yourself so that so your brother is also the son of god the mirror of his father's love for you the soft reminder of his father's love by which he was created and which still abides in him as it abides in you be very still and hear God's voice in him, and let it tell you what his function is. He was created that you might be whole, for only the complete can be a part of God's completion, which created you. It's challenging, um, challenging to, to unpack what this is saying, but it, it seems to be, again, the same idea, which is that your brother is also the son of God, created whole and complete and perfect, just as you are, and still is that. Um, and when you, when you see that in your brother or in the other, the bro your brother does not have to be, a, a, you know, a guy. <laughs> it's, it's anything outside of yourself that you think is outside of yourself, anything external. When you see the other in that way, um, you, you learn that that is your nature as well, that is your reality. And you, re you remind yourself, everyone is reminded. There is no gift the Father asks of you, but that you see in all creation, but the shining glory of his gift to you. Behold his Son, his perfect gift, in whom his Father shines forever, 
and to whom is all creation given as his own. Because he has, it is because he has it, is it given you, and where it lies in him, behold your peace. The quiet that surrounds you dwells in him, and from this quiet come the happy dreams in which your hands are joined in innocence. So now he brings in the, the idea, um, uh, which, which is often used in the course, or often or not, about holding the hand. In this case, you're holding the hand of your brother. right? Sometimes you're holding the hand of Jesus, but it really comes down to the same thing. You know, Jesus is your brother, your brother is Jesus, the Son of God. Um, so the quiet that, that surrounds you dwells in him, and from this quiet come the happy dreams in which your hands are joined in innocence. You're holding your brother's hand. These are not hands that grasp in dreams of pain. They hold no sword, for they have left their hold on every vain, vain illusion of the world. So this, there's two references to the sword here, and I just want to bring in, um, um, you know, the sword symbolizes attack. You, you are not attacking your brother now. When you're holding his hand, um, and, you're, and you're uniting, so to speak, in the spirit, you're uniting in your oneness and your eternal, um, in that place, that eternal dwelling place, um, you cannot attack. And there are some places in the Gospels um, where it's a little confusing, I think, because, you know, there are places where Jesus says, I have come not to bring peace, but the sword. Um, he has his um, disciples bring swords with them. I forget exactly at what moment it is, um, and and one of them cuts off the ear of the high priest. Um, I'm I'm getting the facts wrong, but <laughs> but, but uh, you know the, we we could get, get get into these into these stories, right? Um, I'm just referencing the places in the gospel where 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 we there's talk of the sword. Um, Jesus also says in the Gospels, it's a great line, which is, um, if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword, right? Those who live by the sword will die by the sword. So there's, there's a little bit, it seeming, seems a, a mixed message there. Um, what else does he say? Um, um, there's at least one or two other important things in the Gospels, but, but, you know, I could have done a little research before we started here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, um, they hold no sword, for they have left their hold on every vain illusion of the world. And being empty, they receive instead a brother's hand in which completion lies. So, so when you're not attacking, your hand is open to receive your brothers in acceptance, in calm, quiet acceptance of his unity with you, where no attack is necessary and no no attack is even possible. If you but knew the glorious goal that lies beyond forgiveness, you would not keep hold on any thought, however light the touch of evil on it may appear to be. <clears throat> now this is getting a little deeper because we, we tend to think of our brother as, as outside of ourselves, but, but in a sense, um, our thoughts could be um, other uh, to us as well. So we, we, we do not attach to the thoughts of, of evil and of death and of separation. And we, we, we release those thoughts. We release every thought that is not uh, in alignment with the truth of what we are. For you would understand how great the cost of holding anything God did not give in minds that can direct the hand to bless and lead God's son unto his father's house. In my father's house, there are many mansions. I believe that's also in John, the Gospel of John. Would you not want to be a friend to him created by his father as his home? <clears throat> Again, if you think in terms of your brother, um, your brother is God's home. 
<laughs> that that's the import of, of what this is saying you know just like jesus said earlier in the text the kingdom of god is you right it's not that the kingdom of god is within you but the kingdom of god is you the kingdom of god is your brother the changeless dwelling place is you the changeless dwelling place is your brother um so this is, you know, the, the, the thing about the Gospels, let's just talk about for that for a moment, is the Gospels uh, are almost by necessity rather dualistic, just as the Course speaks very dualistically, right? But there are passages in the Course, well, there, there are passages in the Gospels too, where, where there is reference to a unity beyond the duality. And, and some people say, non you know, it's getting at the idea of non-duality. Like, for instance, in, in, in John, Gospel of John, where Jesus says, I and my Father are one. You know, that would be a classic example. Um, or in the beginning was the, the Logos or the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right? That's a, that's a statement of unity. Um, anyway, let's go on. Would you not want to be a friend to him created by his Father as his home? If God esteems him worthy of himself, would you attack him with the hands of hate? Who would lay bloody hands on heaven itself and hope to find its peace? You can't, in other words, you can't get to God and still harbor anything against your brother. Right? That, that, this is the bottom line here. Very simple terms. If you hold anything against anyone, you, you, you ultimately are holding it against God. And, and it's a no go. You're not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get where you want to go if you are seeking God. You're, you're not gonna find it until you let go of what's in the way. <clears throat> your, your brother thinks he holds the hand of death. Believe him not, but learn instead how blessed are you who can release him just by offering him yours. So you offer your hand to your brother. Your brother thinks your brother is is stuck, mire, mired in his suffering, thinks that he's holding death's hand. You can offer him yours, which is the hand of forgiveness, and remind him that it's not like that, dude. <laughs> dude, it's not like that. Um, we, we, are, we are one. Life is good. God is ultimately good, and we are ultimately one with God. Um, it, let's read on. A dream is given you in which he is your savior, not your enemy in hate. So again, your brother is your savior. So the Holy Spirit gives you this dream, this, this new way of, of understanding the dream. It's the same dream, but now you have a new interpretation for the dream. And the interpretation is the Holy Spirit's, which is, this dream is not a dream of death and hate, but a dream of forgiveness in which you see your brother as yourself. A dream is given you in which you have forgiven him for all his dreams of death, a dream of hope you share with him instead of dreaming evil separate dreams of hate. Why does it seem so hard to share this dream? Because unless the Holy Spirit gives the dream its function, it was made for hate and will continue in death services. Each form it takes in some way calls for death and those who serve the Lord of death have come to worship in a separate, separated world, each with his tiny spear and rusted sword to keep his ancient promises to die. His tiny spear and rusted sword. Right. We have two hands now. We're holding, we're holding the rusted spear and the, and the, and the uh, what is it? The tiny spear and rusted sword. We don't have, we don't have hands to offer to our brother in forgiveness anymore because we are, you know, we've got the two-fisted uh, attack going and we can't let go, right? We've got our little, little measly weapons um, to take down our brother and, and to limit our, and in doing so, we, 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 we make ourselves small and tiny and limited and lacking and, and, the opposite of what we of what we truly are, and and 
isn't that sad? <laughs> but the good news is, is that we can only do that for so long. We could try to do that, but, but, but because we are ultimately uh, one and, and our true nature is, is that home, that, that changeless dwelling place, we can't depart from that forever. We, 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 you know, we, we can't hide, we can't run and hide forever. Such is the core of fear in every dream that has been kept apart for, for, from use by him who sees a different function for a dream. That's the Holy Spirit. When dreams are shared, they lose the function of attack and separation, even though it was for this that every dream was made. So you share the dream, the Holy Spirit's dream, with your brother, which is the dream of forgiveness and, and unity and completion. Um, so in, in doing that, it loses the ego's function, right? It loses the ego's interpretation of what the dream is. Yet nothing in the world of dreams remains without the hope of change and betterment, for here is not where changelessness is found. Let us be glad indeed that this is so, and seek not the eternal in this world. Forgiving dreams are means to step aside from dreaming of a world outside yourself, and leading finally beyond all dreams unto the peace of everlasting life. So again, here is the statement that the Holy Spirit's dream is, is, um, is a step in the right direction. It's not the final goal. Merely what we're doing is we're, we're reinterpreting the ego's dream. We're putting in its place the Holy Spirit's dream of forgiveness and the miracle, which leads to, to that right perception or the right-minded thinking where we see our brother as ourself more and more until we um, are ready to transition from that point finally into the world to, to the world of knowledge, which is our, our, that changeless dwelling place. So in other words, we're, as long as we're still in the dream, however good, however happy or good the dream is, we're still in the dream, right? We're still, we still have not awakened. We, awakening means you are free of the dream entirely. You've woken up from the dream. Um, and as long as we, we're here, we still think we're here, we have not woken up from the dream. Um, there, there are moments where we can touch that place, that would be the holy instant, where we can touch the place of what it feels like to be, to be back home, at home with God. But um, there may still be work to do. We, we can touch that place for an eternal moment. Then we come back, come back into our body, into the world, and, and um, we continue. This is a, that, that, that's actually a quite a deep subject that we'd have to get into more. Um, but, but let's leave it at that for today. I hope this has been helpful. And please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm grateful for those of you who have left, left some comments. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's always nice to get some feedback and, and a reality check on how you're doing. Um, constructive feedback is great. I would love that. So please let me know, and we'll, we'll see you um, next time. Forgiveness and the end of time is the next, is the next section. And, and it, it actually was called Swear Not to Die originally. So we'll get there, um, and it uh, should be interesting. We'll see you soon. Thank you.